Yeah, we just working. <laughs> and I'm back. Right back on top of things. EGO, man. Huh. Thank y'all for joining. I feel so poignant. <laughs> yeah. We back on. It's the Stream King. Like Mike Jordan, Bird, and Magic. This the Dream Team. Eagle Army, stand up. We're going to do some of this work, man. We're going to do a little bit of this work. Prometheus, what up, though? The Stream King has arrived. Please grab your seats. Surgical Summer. Yeah. Yeah, I got my coffee, man. I got my coffee about me now, man. We're going to talk about it all. Story of new media. <laughs> hey, that man Push was coming. He, he came to eat. That's what I'm talking about. Real hip hop shit. Love that baby. Respect that girl. Forget she's a porn star. Let her be your world. Yeah. That man hit it with that macho man ready. Hey, hey, hey. He hit him with that yeah. <laughs> that macho man Randy Savage. Hey, Pusha D got he got that Drake though. <laughs> that man brought up his his uh secret love child and shit. Hey, he got that Drake. Love that baby, respect that girl, forget she's a porn star. Let her be your world, yeah. That motherfucker. Hey, he was tripping on that. That man started bugging. He said, "What he say? OVO forty, hunched over like he eighty, yeah." Uh, we just gonna ride out to this one. Love that baby, respect that girl, forget she's a porn star, let her be your world, yeah. And yeah, we back up in this thing. Make sure y'all smash the like button. <laughs> uh, I'm in my hip hop mode. Push a T and them got me juice. What it do, T B ego, y'all know. I don't know who you be, I don't know who you lost to. I don't know, hey, I don't know who they be, I don't know they lost to. You some easy ass work. I get as close, I get as close as I want. You, you, you ain't gonna do shit. Yeah. Damn, you just started, caught you right on time. What the fuck, you already got a dislike. They gonna dislike, cause that's what haters do. Hey, ooh, ooh, he goes on. Ooh. But you can't dislike me in real life. So, I ain't worried about it. Gang, gang, we just working. The haters going, hey, we can't control that. We can't control none of that. All we could do is what the fuck we been doing. Blessing y'all with this ego army shit. Do you believe in God? If you believe in God, believe in Death Row East. Because we're coming. Believe in boxing ego. I told you I'm working hard every day. They treat me like I'm I'm boxing Cleo. Call now for your free redone. They say I'm psychic when it comes to this boxing shit. Cause we predict the future. Not for future. We predict it in the present. Let's get it, man. Gang. Love that baby, respect that girl. Forget she's a porn star, let her be your world, yeah. Haters ain't gonna do shit. Clinello is fucked. You the only one that thinks that. Golovkin got more shit worried that, that he need to be worried about than Clinello or whatever you talking about. Nobody believes y'all. Y'all just say this stuff, but nobody believes you. You need more people. Man, yeah, this Pusha, Pusha T, Drake beef got me hyped. It got me feeling that essence of hip-hop again. You know what I'm saying? Ego the OG of this. You can't spell you can't spell ego without the O and the G. I'm the OG of this shit. Bars. E-G-O. Get it? We flipped that. O-G. Come on, man. What does ego spell backwards? O-G-E. Period. 
He's an OG. However you want to say it. Let's get it. Push a T ether that boy. Yeah, man. Story of added. See, listen. <laughs> yeah, he got real disrespectful with it. It put me in the mind frame. I can't say hit him up because hit him up is just like classic. Cla like, see, another reason I give Pop hit him up points is because he did the diss his own way. Like, other people had done diss, but Pop just went to a whole nother level of disrespect. Hey, don't worry, y'all got sickle cell. You fuck around with me, have a seizure, a heart attack. Like, damn. Like, why would you even? Why? What? If Pac must have been really hot up in the studio. But anyway, this Pusha T beef put me in the mind frame of Jay Z super ugly. Jay Z got real disrespectful. See, some of y'all new booties, y'all rookies don't know about classic. Class, y'all know about Takashi. Gotti, gotti. It's something, something, gotti, gotti. Scoom gang, do do do. 50 bang, gotti, gotti. That's all y'all know about that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? I let my nut hang, 50 bang, skull gang, gutty, gutty. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But shout out to Takashi. He, he out here eating, but y'all don't know, y'all don't know classic. Anyway, Nas, Jay-Z got real disrespectful. I'm going to just put it, I'm going to break it down for, for my hip-hop hands, and then we'll get the roll call and get the boxing talk started. But Jay-Z, he said... Me and the boy AI got more in common than just balling and rhyming. Get it? More in common. Let me break that down for you. Nas's baby mom, before Khalees, her name was Carmen. I'm gonna have to say it without the flavor so you guys can understand what I'm saying. Her name was Carmen. They're all from New York, I guess. And that was Nas's work. That was Nas's chick or whatever. He had a baby with her. Jay-Z smashed. That's what he's saying. He's saying he smashed. He said he skeeted in his Jeep, left condoms on Nas's baby seat. That's super disrespectful. Not only did you, that's like, remember Broner and um, Paulie Malinaji? He's like, I came to Brooklyn. Ah, oh, man, you know, about belts. I came to Brooklyn. I took his belt and his girl. And then Paulie was like, why are you bragging about my side piece? Why you keep bragging about my side piece? There's nothing, bro. That's my side piece. You remember that whole thing? That's So that's kind of the equivalent. Jay-Z is like, I... I, I, man, I took your work and I skied it in your Jeep, your car, and left condoms in your baby seat. Like, that's super disrespectful. And then the, the play on words, he said, me and the boy AI, Allen Iverson, because Allen Iverson allegedly smashed his girl too. So he said, me and the boy AI got more in common, more in common, Carmen. Me and the boy AI got more in common just, than just bowling and rhyming. Because AI used to rap too As well as obviously he's a hooper Me and the boy AI got more in common Than just balling and rhyming Get it? More in common That's that's the shit Pusha T was on With this Drake dish Why you keep bragging about my side piece? And see this is the thing I, I, I actually like Drake I know a lot of people don't like Drake and shit He makes hits He makes good music I like the Duppy Freestyle But Freestyles and, and like, you know what I mean? Certain things. This ain't Meek Mill. You know what I'm saying? Like when Meek Mill responded to Drake, you didn't hear people buzzing like this. This Pusha shit got people buzzing because a lot of motherfuckers didn't know Drake had this secret son or whatever. So I don't know. It got real. It got real in a hurry. That's what we're going to say. Love that baby. Respect that girl. Forget that she's a porn star. Let her be your world. Yeah. He's, so he's basically telling you to, why don't you forget, put put her past aside, even though she's a porn star getting skeeted on. Oh, ski, ski. That motherfucker's like, why don't you claim your, your girl and claim your child? That's cold. <laughs> hey, that's cold. That's cold shit. Now, one last thing I want to say on this rap beef, and then we'll get started to the Triple G beef, middleweight beef, is you got to look at it like this. The song's called Story of Adidon or whatever, Add-On, whatever the shit's called, right? That is the name of Drake's upcoming shoe with Adida, the Adidon or whatever, however you say this shit, right? So what Pusha T did was brilliant. He made, he made like a gossipy rap beef song that he knew would get people talking because a lot of people didn't know Drake had this kid and he came at Drake's whole family tree. He dissed. 
Drake's pops, Dennis Graham. Dennis Graham stay off the gram, all this shit. He dissed his mom for never being married, and he dissed his dad for leaving him when he was five. He talked about the the complexities of growing up biracial and not feeling like you belong to either culture, black or white, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and having mixed hair, mixed grade of hair. So he talked about Drake's insecurities. He dissed his man, his producer, who's sick with MS. You know what I mean? He said 40 hunched over like he 80. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got? <laughs> hey, that's cold-blooded. But, you know what I mean? Uh, who else? He dissed his baby mom, porn star chick. And he, and he brought up his son. So I guess you could say he's dissing his son or whatever. Let that boy come home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyway, he came up with this clever diss. Family-themed diss. And he named it after Drake's shoe. That's hot. That's hot out here. You know what I'm saying? So the reason why is because now when you think of Drake's whatever his fucking shoe, you're going to think of this disc because the disc came out and gained buzz before people even knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? So when Drake drops these shoes, you're going to think of this story of Adidon shit. You're going to think of this Pusha T disc. So he made he linked his name or his disc with Drake's release on his upcoming shoe with Adidas. That's that's real hip hop shit. That's like you trying to destroy that man's brand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like especially the shoe game. I ain't a shoe head like some people like my boy T, but at the same time, shoe heads be taking the shit seriously. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, some people may choose like, man, I ain't walking that sh that Adidas shoe after this disc, you know what I mean? That shit ain't fly. I I rather get some Yeezys or some shit. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got? <laughs> that boy is sick, sick, sick. Hey, that. Now, speaking of this boxing shit, I know a lot of y'all haters is sick, sick, sick. How much time y'all got? Tick, tick, tick. Oh my gosh, we killing. Ego Army, stand up. We are the gang, gang. On top of things, West Side. I put that West Side on my back. Y'all know how I do. Tick, tick, tick. How much time? That's what I want to know. How much time these haters got? You know what I mean? Shout out to OVO40. I ain't dissing you. I'm just going off what he said. But I want to know how much my how much time old media got. How much time they got. Shout out to Real Rich Man. 510 up in this thing. Shout out to the rich, man. Bay Area. You know I put that bay on my back. I love the bay. <clears throat> so... Let, do y'all want to skip roll call today and just jump into the boxing? Because we already had that beginning about hip-hop. Skip roll call, yes or no? Y'all want to skip it or y'all want to do it anyway? The fans run the channel. Whatever y'all say, yes or no? We skipping? Nah. Yes. Yes. Two yeses and two noes. Come on. No. Yes. All right, we skipping it. All right, we'll do a roll call at the end. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? All right, we skipping. So let's jump right into the boxing. <clears throat> the WBC says that we were gonna ex we were gonna make an exception for Gennady hey, no, guys, Golovkin to fight Canelo. That's a big event, big fight, and the rematch needs closure. The WBC said, however, if you choose to not fight Canelo. That was the only person we were giving you an exception for, for that particular event. Should you and Canelo not be able to work this out and actually um, come to terms for a rematch, then you got to fight your mandatory. We ordering that. Hey, that's Hey, good luck, kid, man. You got to do something, baby. That's crazy. And the, this is the thing. The way the WBC said it in the interview... It's in, um, who wants access to the interview? This is all access. I ain't talking showtime. Everybody check, check the comment section of this forum. That is the link. I just put the link to you. We all access. All right. Now, this is the cold-blooded thing. Just listen to the verbiage. 
Suleiman of the WBC. So the WBC recommends that Gennady Golovkin continue negotiations for the rematch. Like, they sound like they, they're trying to warn Triple G. Hey, you better get your money with Canelo, because if not, you got that boy Charlo to worry about. I'm just saying, listen to the verbiage. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read it. WBC says, and I quote, Golovkin has all our support. If the fight is not done with Canelo, he will have to go with Jamal Charlo because all the history as it is, is clear. So we are recommending him to do what is best for him because he wants the fight with Canelo, right? So they're basically sounding like we're going to force, <laughs> like, don't force our hand. Just go ahead and get this Canelo money. Because if you don't, you got to get this, this Charlo money, which is going to be less. And you have to deal with that. Damn, homie. Hold on one second, y'all. <clears throat> he said, we're recommending him to do what's best for him because he wants to do the rematch with Canelo. He wants to earn the money that he will generate there. <clears throat> and he wants the visibility that he has always wanted around the world. He has sacrificed so much for many years to get to this point. And now for something that is not so important like the financial split it's putting him at risk what listen to the verbiage they're basically like it sounds like they're pleading with Golovkin like they said you like you tripping off this financial they they said you tripping off this financial split this is putting you at risk that sound crazy like who like the only way I can interpret it is Charlo is that at risk. You making it sound like Charlo is fucking nicotine or some shit. Like he a cigarette. That's the only thing. What what is at risk? <laughs> like 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 what does that mean? They said fight your if if you tripping with Canelo can't get it done. That's putting you at risk. Hey, see the truth be coming out, man. Truth be coming out. What people say, that motherfucker said, we, that's putting you at risk. That's something you say to, like, a pregnant woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go to those... I'm, no, nah, I'm, I'm being serious. You go to those, like, stores or restaurants or whatever, and it was like... There's, like, signs posted. Oh, this has certain, certain things made with peanuts. If you happen to be pregnant, just, like, they're warning you. <laughs> Do you, man, let me <laughs> let me find out what the actual sign says. But I've seen, I know I've seen those signs posted, and it's for like people who are at risk or going through like, you know, what I mean, second trimester and stuff, like pregnant. They're, they're warning the pregnant people that hey, we prepare foods with these ingredients. So if you're pregnant and this is gonna bother you, or this paint will bother you, or whatever, and you're pregnant. This might not be the spot for you because this is how we prepare it. Hold on. Pregnant signs. Let me see. Uh, I typed in pregnant signs. It's telling me signs like tummy bloating, morning sickness. It's like giving me actual signs. Hold on. That mo Man, I can't find it on Google. Boxing bald go? <laughs> How do you know what that means? Someone said Triple G is pregnant. Boxing gay go? Is that that's that's your best that's your best work? Boxing bald go. And boxing gay go. Yeah, I'm really bold. Do I have any shooters in the building to handle my light work? Or I gotta do it myself? Huh? Any shooters in the building? 
Yeah, you just trolling. Someone said clap him. Oh, my pleasure. They take this troll shit serious. Got him! <laughs> that was easy. But anyway, um. Yeah, man. They said at risk. That's crazy. Like, what does that mean? At risk? That's that makes it sound that makes it sound crazy. Like you worried about hey, it, like, how just read the header, like. WBC urges and, and pleads with Triple G. Like, they're begging you to take the money route because they, they know if you fight Charlo, you're at risk. <laughs> That's what they said. They said you're at risk. It's like, if you you know how, like, certain things, don't take this medicine if you have high blood pressure, if you're pregnant, da -da 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 -da, you're at risk. They said Triple G at risk, man. So they say you got to take that Canelo money. Or that's what they're recommending that he does. <laughs> hey, the walls are closing in on what's right in boxing. This is what Triple G wanted, so I'm happy. He said he wanted the, the all the belts, hey no guys, all that. So go after all the belts. Billy Joe got one. Um. You wanted the tough challenges, the young hungry lions, the lions only. Fight him. He's been calling you out. Hey, no guys, I take 30% now. <laughs> hey, yo, wallet today. This is funny. Yeah, man. We we gonna see a lot of the Joshua situation, Keith Thurman, Triple G. We're gonna see how this all play out, and I can't wait. Because at the end of the day, more often than not, I promise you that Ego's army on this side, we're going to be on the right side of the coin. Because we've been advocating for what's right in boxing. Let's TiVo this. Let's DVR this. Let me rewind. When it's all said and done, when the paint dries, Ego's army is going to be all right. Because... We've been doing what's right and what we've been advocating for the growth of boxing. What's right in boxing. Listen, ain't no one man above the crew. You know that shit. You know what I'm saying? This is not about one fighter. This is about our sport. So when it's all, no matter what Triple G decides, we are good. Because all I want him to decide is what's right. Don't put yourself at risk. You know, the WBC said it. Bro, you watch a lot of Floyd Mayweather. What does Floyd got to do with, with anything? But anyway, um, just don't put yourself at risk. Make the right decision. The WBC told you. Now, the funny thing is, the, the racist fans are the only ones that don't want to see this. As a boxing fan, how could you honestly say that you dread seeing... Just just listen to the logic, people. Just listen. I don't know how he made 54. Maybe Charlo body grew fast. No, it's not. It's, you got to understand boxing. Is, it don't have nothing to do with that. Listen, if you're killing yourself to make weight, right... And then you move up to the next category where you are not killing yourself to make weight as much. Then you're going to fill out. You're going to fill out quick because you shouldn't have been at 54 for as long as you were. See, y'all got to y'all got to understand boxing. See, I'm there. I'm at the fights. I was listen, I have it on tape. Jermel and Jamal set history and they fought <clears throat> and they fought at um they fought on the Showtime card. It was Edison De Lada versus Vonis Matarosin. Conveniently, Vonis Matarosin's last fight before Triple G, right? I was at that card. It was in Las Vegas, Cosmopolitan, I think. This is off the top of my head, people. I remember because I was there, right? Immediately after he had a tough fight with Austin Charles, Jamal Charlo said he's moving up. Julian J. Rock Williams was in the crowd in Las Vegas. 
and people at that time were buzzing and I think they might have even interviewed J-Rock I don't remember because J-Rock was the mandatory so people were like pressing Jamal like oh man you, you gonna move up you gonna move up you don't wanna fight your mandatory that's what people were saying at that time Charlo said after that fight I gotta move up after that fight I was there so the point being is he knew he he had, it was getting ready to the point where it was probably getting harder and harder to make 54. But guess what he did? The noble thing. He stayed around long enough to take care of J-Rock and blemish his record and knock him out. Then he moved up. Answers all questions. So you can't say he ran from him because he decided to stay an extra fight to fight his mandatory because people said he was ducking. Some real lines only shit. Now, for the record, Jermel Charlo did a recent interview and he said I was talking shit about him. He gets me confused. I'm not going to put the other person on blast. But there's another person in boxing and I know for a fact because he's done it before. He's getting me confused with them. He, for some reason, attaches boxing ego to that other brand. He thinks I'm him. So some people hit me up and sent me this video of Jamel's like, hey, oh, so-and-so, Box of Ego, yeah, he was talking shit about me. I wasn't talking shit about him. I didn't say nothing about him. So anyway, I know he's confusing me because he did it <clears throat> in front of me. He's like, yeah, he came to my gym and I've never been to his gym. So somebody else came to his gym and he thinks it's me for whatever reason. No, it's not Ellie Sekbeck. But anyway, it don't matter who it is. But now I'm just clearing the air because some people hit me up talking about, oh, he says, he said, uh, Box of Ego's talking shit. For some reason, he thinks I'm somebody else in this game. But it's not me. And like I said, he even said it to me. He's like, yeah, he been to my gym, and I've never been to his gym. Nor have I even talked shit about him. I, I mean, nothing to talk shit about. He's doing his thing. Fighting his mandatory, knocking him out. <clears throat> Fighting a veteran trout. I ain't talking shit. But anyway, yeah, that's to clear it up because I know a lot of you guys hit me up sending me this clip, especially on the Instagram talking about, and he was like, he was talking about all the media that is against him or some shit. And then Jamel said, I was talking shit about him. I didn't say shit. Point out the video. Like anybody, throw, put the video up. Even the video where, where Erickson Lubin was putting them lines only talking about coke. I didn't talk shit about him. I talked about what Erickson Lubin said, and then I said that Erickson Lubin's tripping because he got knocked out. So it's kind of like, it sounds like sour grapes. But anyway, enough of that. That's just to clear the air for those who care and, and the people that have hit me up. I ain't said nothing about that man, and he's confusing me with somebody else. Point blank, period. But I like what the Charlos are doing, and I like Texas. Texas, Texas, y'all got some winners. Uh, Derek James, real one. But, um, yeah, Charlo, other Charlo, Jamal, he stayed at at 54, but he, he was pushing it, you know what I mean? But he did it because he, he heard the, the chatter. You heard a motherfucker saying he was scared of J-Rock, so he proved he wasn't, and he beat him. So that's why he's filled out so quickly, I would say, is because he was his body was outgrown. See, this is the thing. The, you know the Charlos are the same age as Canelo, right? Now, I know Canelo got the tainted meat shit, in, on his record or whatever but they're the same age they're they're like three months apart or four months apart or something like that but they're young guys so in your early 20s you could do a little bit more your body's more pliable more flexible it'll give you more room but when you get to that mid 20 to 30 point or you know what i mean your body's gonna go through changes metabolism slows down and stuff like that so it, it might be harder to keep weight off of you i know personally when I was 21, I could eat what the fuck, whatever I wanted. You know what I mean? And it would have little effect. But as you get older, you can't just eat whatever and not expect some of that stuff to stick. So that's just part of growing up and growing into your frame and being a man. Most people stop puberty. They say guys stop puberty about <clears throat> 21 through 25, depending on the guy. You get what I'm saying? So you, you might, if, if you stop puberty at 25... Your metabolism might be like boom, 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 all the way up until that. But then you start getting 26, 27, 30, you start getting up there, then it's different. That's where Charlos are at. They're at like probably like 27 maybe, you know, off the top of my head, maybe 28. You know what I mean? So they're right about the age where, you know what I mean? 
you gotta you gotta be more concentrated on weight loss, like what you did when you were 18 and shit. I, man, I could eat whatever the fuck I want when I was 18. Anything. You know what I mean? Or even little stuff. Well, this is just me. When I was 18, I could eat whatever and like, it didn't have no effect on me really. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes now if you eat too much, you'd be all full. Like, you know what I mean? You get older, you're like stomach hurting and shit. <laughs> like, why the fuck did I eat that? I know people, like my sister's like that in the terms of um, when she was younger growing up, she could eat a lot of spicy food. But now she has to stay away from like more spicy shit. You know what I mean? Like, too spicy. Charlo's probably 6'1", 6'1 one and a half, 6'2". Um, hey, who the fuck ever, Abdullah, Mohammed, whatever, if you put 5'5", five, five, why you keep putting it like a thousand times, bro? We get you. You could have put 5'5 five, five once and then just kept it pushing. Stop putting that 18 times and shit. Y'all be trying to tattoo up the... Man. I just got an email from Top Rank. Hold on. Lomachenko undergoes shoulder surgery successful. So shout out to Lomachenko. Top Rank just emailed me. His his surgery was a success. So now he has to just go through the rehabilitation, physical therapy, recovery portion. But see, the good thing about people like Lomachenko, I've been around his people. And his people were telling me that um, he's basically kind of like an acrobat. You know what I'm saying? Like he could do, I mean, you see it. You, you'd be doing handstands and flips. How you gonna knock Rocky Martinez out and just bust that <laughs> that backflip? You know what I mean? So he's real nimble and stuff like that. Those are all good signs for his healthy recovery because he's already like in shape. He's already athletic. So he should be able to get back to, back to things with that. Now, if he was fat, sloppy, he's looking like Larry Holmes, flabby as sick. Trying to play a hate on my shit. Could eat it. If you was looking like Larry Holmes, flabby and sick, that'd be different because you have to recover from that. But I think Lomachenko would be cool because he's already athletic, real nimble, in shape. So you'd be able to bounce back. I'm gonna be laughing hard as fuck when Charlo beat Triple G. These fanboys gonna be crying. See, John Steroid Walker, y'all just say stupid shit. Boxing ego is 5'5 five five and vegan. Like, it's just beyond stupid. Anybody that's ever met me, anybody that ever met me, no, I ain't no fucking 5'5. Five five, so it's just like, it's pointless. No one's gonna even debate you. And then as far as me being vegan, I post my meals on like Instagram. I've showed you guys, so you just sound stupid. Y'all like to sound stupid. Y'all want... No, I'm not no vegan. Ego, ego is biased as fuck. Bro, fuck ego. Okay. Let me put him in the high seat. I got to, man. You can't even spell bias, you dumbass. What the fuck is a biased with the, with the T at the end? Let me off with his head. Let me get him, man. They want to hate so bad. Okay, you want to hate... You want some attention? I got you. Uh, champ Pack Cha Cha. Get your Cha Cha slide ass up in here in this hot seat. Okay, why am I biased with the T? And why does it fuck me? Pause. Come on, Cha Cha slide. What's good? What's goody, man? What's popping? What, why am I biased? That's how I know it's a bunch of dummies. You motherfuckers can't even spell. You're biased. It's biased with an ED at the end, motherfucker. Come on, Cha Cha Slide. You're biased. Oh, now you can spell right. 
Hey, Rich Mafia, clap John Steroid Walker. We gonna get this juice head. We gonna get this meat head up out of here. Rich Mafia, Rich Mafia, clap him. He wanna be on Roy's? He wanna cheat the system? Okay, Rich Mafia just clapped him. One juice head out of here. We got one meat head up out of here. Where's this other dude saying you're biased? Where he at? I don't know you be, I don't know you lost to. I don't know you be, I don't know you lost to. Where's this cha-cha slide, motherfucker? How am I biased? Say something. Me? Yes, you. Cha-cha slide. You. Champak cha-cha. You said I'm biased? Motherfucker talking to me. Me? Ooh. Yeah, you. You the one talking shit. Yeah, yeah, you. Eagle Army, man. We got it. Didn't I just say that? This is what it takes. Sometimes you take something from me, I'm coming to get it back. Now, if you beat me, you beat me. I say, okay, we had a good night. I'm still coming to get it back. Where you at, Cha-Cha Sly? All right. Play dumb one more again, and you're out of here. You talking to me? Champ pack Cha-Cha. Yes, you. And you're trying to be slick because you did it again. I'm going to give you one last opportunity. If you put something dumb and you don't come get this work in this high seat, you clapped up. Rinse Mafia. Put him in the scope. Rich Mafia, put him in the scope. Okay. Playing dumb. You're biased, but then when it comes down to it, you you just playing games. So nobody believes you. Rich Mafia got you in the scope. Say something else. Say something else that's a joke. Because we ain't joking. I ain't Kevin Hart. Rich Mafia, you in the scope. Now, what do you have to say? Okay, I'm ready for the hot seat. Okay, so why am I biased? You have one more opportunity to not stall. I'm biased with the T, according to you. Why am I biased? If your next response does not answer that question, Wrench Mafia got you in the scope, and you're going to really do the cha-cha slide. So once again, why am I biased with the T? Because your dumbass can't spell. I run boxing. Motherfucker, I am boxing. If you put anything that is not an answer to that question, Wrench Mafia said anybody can't get it. So you already know what he's on. We on that push your T shit. We gonna push your T all the way out this stream. So, now that that's been established, Cha Cha Slide. Why am I biased? Look at him stalling. He like Joseph, he's stalling. He's stalling. He like Joseph, he's stalling. He ain't from Russia and he definitely ain't Russian. Bars, oh my God, I said, just like Joseph, he's stalling. He ain't from Russia, cause he definitely ain't Russian. Bars, oh my gosh, get this man. Cha-Cha went in hiding. I told you we gonna make him do the Cha-Cha slide. But guess what, Yo ass on the timer now. We are not waiting all day for this. 15 seconds. If you haven't responded in 15 seconds, we gotta move on. I'm biased, so please explain. One more opportunity. If it's some dumb shit, Wrench Mafia has you in the scopes. <laughs> oh my gosh, Darren Heron got some bars for you. He said you stalling like a shitty ass public bathroom. I agree. Cha Cha Slide, the type of motherfucker, it be eight urinals and he gonna stand next to your urinal. Like, why, bro? I'm peeing in this one. Why would you come stand right next to me with all these open urinals? What the fuck is you doing? All right, 13 seconds. Wrench Mafia getting the clapping. 10. It's easy work. Come on, Cha-Cha Slide. You got to do something, baby. 7. It's that easy. Oh, you're biased. Okay, what did I say? What do you disagree with? Disappeared. Four. This easy work. Easy money. I told you it's gonna be a surgical summer. Love that boy. Respect that girl. Forget that she's a porn star. Let her be your world. Yeah. Alright. Wrench Mafia, it's, it's been 15. Get him out of here.
Fuck you and the Dick Riders Mafia. Bye bye. I knew Rich Mafia wasn't gonna have that. Clap. Everybody type clap. You will get clap, dog. Man, you ain't strapped, dog. You will get clap. <laughs> this shit is so fun and easy. This is the easiest job I ever had. Real talk. Because all my other jobs have manual labor involved. This ain't nothing manual about it. You're biased. What did I say? Fuck you and the dick rider squad. You're done. Anyway, Trooper G, can't wait to see your next decision. Who you decide to fight. Um, WBC says if it ain't Canelo, they order in Charlo. One, two, Charlo's coming for you. Three, four, better lock that door. Five, six, it's been crew the big. Seven, eight, the lion ain't nothing, ain't. Man, sleep. Hey, that's a good fight, man. Hey, but actually, you could do that thong. That's that's song, I said thong and shit. Uh, you could do that song for anybody at middleweight. There's a lot of good fights for Triple G now. Like one, two, Boo Boo's coming for you. Three, you know what I'm saying? One, two, Billy Joe's in the room. You you could do that with. There's just a lot of good fights. And see, this is the. Th this is the thing with um, with the Triple G situation is I don't think people fear him like they may have once feared him because they've seen in his last three fights that he is human. Two people, two of his last three went the distance with him. So they're like, okay, if I stay away from this, then I can, you know what I mean, I could dodge his power. You look like a poo. Man, block this dumbass dude. Really? Jay's real dad? Y'all aren't even like original or funny. Okay, let's do a hot seat. Jet Jet Halal. Ego, you're biased. Why? Why am I biased? Dumbass? Really? So that's your response? Gotta go. It's been fun. Shit is easy peasy. Grown men on that silly shit. That's what I'm saying, man. We we just we gotta avoid that because they just want attention. All right, mid midnight toker, you in the hot seat? I'm telling y'all, y'all y'all, if y'all asking these dumbass questions that you can answer yourself, then I'm gonna challenge these questions. You in the hot seat? How come Charlo shouldn't have to fight better competition before Triple G? You are a fearful man fan. You are afraid. You are afraid of the implications. You are afraid that Triple G stands a chance to lose, right? And I'll prove it. Just like, remember Dragon the Bruce Lee story? When he was like talking about how he's perfected his martial arts. And he's like, okay, I'll prove it. I'll be any man in this room in less than 60 seconds. I will prove it. I will beat you in the hot seat. Stand up. Hey, shooters, I'm not I'm not addressing these clowns right now, like most of them. If you see dumb shit, block them. Big drama show, Mr. K the clicker, block all these motherfuckers. We just gonna have a World War III out this bitch. Yeah, big drama show. We got your big drama show. It's coming right up. Wait till the more shooters come too. But um, now back to this hot seat. I'll be any man in this room in less than 60 seconds. How come Charlo shouldn't have to fight better competition? Midnight Toker, the truth. We gonna see if you're the truth. Explain that. Why should Why should Charlo? I don't consider ego biased, but Charlo will get his ass whooped. That doesn't answer anything. Hey, block Mr. K the clicker. We gonna click you up out of here. Adam Sandler style. Click, 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 click. How much time he got? Tick, tick, tick. That boy sick, sick, sick. I'm on that Pusha T shit. So, Mr. Clicker, got him. Click, click, click. How much time he got? That boy sick, sick, sick. Tick, tick, tick. I got to give it up to him. We got a new shooter. Deron Heron is a new shooter. 
He always show love to the channel. I know him. I know the face. I know the name. And he donated super chats. We got a new shooter. Hey, don't abuse the privilege. You know what to do, and you know who be on that bullshit. But don't jump the gun too, because I want to get, I want to bait a couple of these people in the hot seat. Okay. So the guy up in the hot seat. Okay, Midnight Toker. He says, I'm saying Charlo should fight Jacobs first. Why does Charlo have to fight Jacobs first? Go. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got? So explain to me why Charlo should have to go through Char uh, Jacobs first, like you say. You in the hot seat. Come on. Let's go. Let's work. Charlo is overrated. That's your opinion. You fight him. Jacob scared the hell out of Charlo when he saw him. Strike one. We're not playing. I'm asking you a question, and you keep saying stuff that doesn't answer the question. That doesn't really work, because the fans want to hear your answer. Strike one. Midnight Toker, you supposed to be the truth. Tell us the goddamn truth. Why does Charlo need to go through Daniel Jacobs before getting to Triple G? Explain why. You saying Charlo got scared and when Jacobs ran out, none of that has nothing. Why should he? Strike one. Easy work. And y'all be calling me biased. And y'all can't even answer the question because you know you're going to get hit with that rope of dope. You don't even know where I'm coming. You don't know what angle I'm coming from, but you know I'm coming. Expect me like you expect Jesus. I'm coming. So why does Charlo need to go through these extra hurdles and hoops to fight Triple G? You already got strike one. Think about your next response. Come on, Midnight Toker. We'll see who has the better argument. You or me. It's going to be you or me. One of us got to win. One of us got to lose. We all waiting. Because Jacobs fought a very close battle to Triple G, so Charles should go through him first. And I said, you ain't biased. No, it does, you don't have to, like, kiss my ass or, like, oh, I'm not saying you're biased. You don't. You just threw that in because you're about to get smoked. So... Because Jacob, your logic is because Jacobs had a tough fight where he beat Triple G, in my opinion, but it was a close fight regardless of who you had. Because he had a tough fight that Charlo has to go through him. You still haven't explained anything. You haven't explained why Charlo, his own independent man, all you did was said that really Jacobs gave Triple G a tough fight, which we already knew. So once again, strike two. My question to you is why should Charlo have to fight another guy to get to Triple G. You just really reiterated what we already knew. That he had given him a tough fight. Jacobs did. Okay. Thank you. Everybody type. You know you done fucked up. You know you done fucked up. I was waiting for this moment. I knew it would come. All you have to do is just like boxing. You got to be patient. You got to be patient with it. You don't go looking for the knockout, but the knockout will come if you set it up. The man has been set up. Everybody type, you know you done fucked up. Smash the like button. I'm about to take this boy to school. If y'all want to hear me take this boy to school, because he just fucked up with his latest response, please, can I get a hell yeah in the comment section? Block Simon, Max Simon. He's clearly the same stalker from earlier. You know you done fucked up. Can I get a hell yeah in the comment section? It's just a matter of time with these dudes. Their real intent comes out. All right. He says, his answer was, how has Charlo earned a shot? Now I'm about to take you to school. How is the fuck did Vanas Matarosin earn a shot? And he was coming off the couch and coming off of a loss. So right then and there with that one shot, one kill, your argument is dead in the water. You can't say what has Charlo done when the WBC as an organization, as a staff, as a record label, and as a motherfucking crew is ordering this fight. That's what they are doing. Triple G has a belt from them. This is their belt. This is their green belt that they've opened up to these fighters. So that's coming from the WBC. WBC didn't tell him to fight Vonis Matarosin. But irrespective, irregardless of that, in addition, Vonis was coming off a loss and coming off the couch and hadn't fought in two years. So why didn't he have to fight Jacobs to prove his worth at middleweight before getting it? 
right? Why didn't Von Esmata have to go through these these same hoodles? Ho- 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 you got me making up words because I know I'm killing you. Hurdles and, and loops and shit. Why didn't he have to do that? That's just one. That's one person. And then even if you say, oh, Von Esmata, because I know how you guys think. Oh, Von Esmata Rosen was a late replacement. And Canelo failed a drug test. Try to blame it on Canelo. We can go through Triple G's whole resume. What did Willie Monroe do? How did Willie Monroe go through Jacobs or these other tough middleweight? He lost. He lost to Darnell Boone. You know what I'm saying? Where was his tough like fights where he went through the ringer to get to Triple G? What did Dominique Wade do? Yes, he was a mandatory, just like Charlo. What did he do? Right? What did fucking a welterweight Kell Brook do? Why didn't he fight Jacobs first and then get the Triple G shot? Now you're up. Man, fuck call-ins. I am the call-in. You ain't gonna beat me through a call-in. You're gonna get dusted off even worse. Y'all talking about, oh, you should accept call It's just gonna be more embarrassing and more pitiful because these dudes are gonna be stuttering because they and they, they can't beat me with these arguments. That it has nothing to do with a voice or a text. They can't beat me with these. Wasn't Kell Brook before Jacobs? Now you're playing semantics. So I just named like four or five different fighters. You focus on one. So, oh, it wasn't Kell Brook versus Jacobs? Yes, he was the fight before Jacobs. Okay, scratch Kell Brook. What about, what about his other opponents like Vanes Martirosin? Why'd you skip over that? Explain Vanes. Why didn't he go through Jacobs first? And why does what is Kell Brook happening before Jacobs have to do with anything? You just said that the motherfucker Charlo should fight Jacobs because he's a quality fighter. So who cares at what point and what order they fought? You dudes getting dusted off. But anyway, explain that. Here, I got his explanation. The Black Channel, they gotta go through more. Why don't you let Jamal Charlo fight the other Negro and have a, a, a Super Six? Like, what's your response? I'm waiting. Oh, the irony. You're scared Charlo will lose to Jacobs. Okay, and you're not scared that Triple G will lose to Charlo. Because, listen, now you just, you see, you look at pitiful, my guy, and I'm, I'm just going to keep breaking you down, and you can't do nothing about it because your logic is flawed. You're saying I'm scared that Charlo would lose to Jacobs. I'm friends with Jacobs, so you look stupid. So if Jacobs beat Charlo, I have more of a relationship outside of this game with Jacobs than I do Charlo. I like both fighters, but why would that make why would that hurt me? Why would I be afraid of my friend losing to someone else? That's strike infinity. That's like strike 20 for you. So you sound stupid. Oh, Jacobs is my guy. He stopped that whole interview and he was like, man, I see your video, I like what you're doing, blah, 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 in front of everybody. So what are you talking about? Why would that make me fearful because my friend won? Second, you're saying this, but you don't want to see Charlo immediately get a Triple G fight. See, the thing, the fact that matters is Charlo versus Jacobs is a good fight, but nobody's ordering that. The WBC has stated to ESPN Deportes that if Triple G is not to fight Canelo next, he has to fight Charlo. So nobody is is saying that Charlo and Jacobs must fight to secure their rankings and or their positioning. You got to do something, baby. You getting fucked up. Someone said, casual fans, is this your king? <laughs> Y'all can't beat me with this. So again, Charlo Jacobs is a good fight, but it's not a, it's not a fight that's being mandated by a sanctioning body. WBC is coming out and saying, yo, if you don't fight Canelo, you must fight Charlo. And you try to create your own matchmaking. Conveniently with the black fighter, the black murderers wrote, the black channel. We see it. Come get this work, man. What's your rebuttal to that? You still ain't even answered the Vonis Matarosin question. Why didn't he go through Jacobs? Jacobs is a quality fighter. Jacobs would have stretched Vonis, in my opinion. With the same circumstances, maybe it doesn't happen in the second round, but it would have happened, in my opinion. 
because you, you're taking a man off the couch and a guy who has no experience at that weight against a guy who does have experience at that weight. So you haven't even answered the Vonis Matarosin question. I pretty let's just vote. This dude ain't got nothing for me. If this man got smoked up, we 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 fried him into a souffle. Put your L's up. I don't got I, I don't got this much time to talk to one clown. Vonis was a bum. No argument there. Man, put your L's up. I don't even read. I ain't. I don't know you be. I don't know you lost. I don't even got time to respond or read to anything you saying anymore. You got you got fried, bro. It's not even worth my time. You got to pay me. Hit me on Venmo. Hit me on PayPal if you want to continue this conversation. I ain't got nothing else to say to you. Y'all got to start paying me for this. Because I already, I already been beat you. You want to continue this conversation? Hit me on Venmo. I'll talk to you. Shooters, get him out of here. Get his dumb, weak-ass argument point having ass out of here. Hit me on Venmo. And you want to you, you wanna continue the conversation? Hit me on... I'm TB Ego. <laughs> like, someone say you're basically arguing with Larry Merchant. See, the fans see it. Shut that soft-ass shit up, like Broner say. I just thought about it, man. I ain't, I've already beat you. I you, listen. This this is the thing that made me mad, is I kept putting him further in the casket, and he hadn't even answered my first point. He just switches on. Oh, didn't Kelbrook happen before Jacob? Man, shut that soft ass shit up. I'm Ego Valley. You want to talk? Let we could talk. We could talk through PayPal, money talk, like Chris Tucker and Charlie Sheen. You want to talk? Okay. We'll talk on Venmo. That's where I want to talk. Talk on PayPal. Send me send me a little care package, and then we'll continue. I ain't talking. Man, I already burned you. I'm money ego. See, y'all y'all going to get me. Like, I'm not even trying to be this way. But I got to be this way. Why? Because I got to be thug. Ego villain. Pay to play, exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's like a slot machine ain't going to give you extra pools if you ain't got no credits. So you don't get no extra pools. You don't, you can't keep playing the game when you got no credits in there. If this shit say zero credits, the slot machine ain't gonna let you pull. You can't max bet. So same same goes. If you already got flamed up in the hot seat, I can't keep talking to you. You gotta put some more money in. That's how it go. I'm like a slot machine. Pause. You gotta put some more money in to keep playing. Shout out to Chicago, man. I love y'all. Gang, gang. And the funny thing is, he's going to say that I'm afraid to see two fighters I like fight. You know what I mean? Charlo and Jacobs. One that is real cool with me outside of, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's cool. Always showed me love and stuff. And Daniel Jacobs. And he's going to say, I'm scared to see Jacobs win. Why would I Why would I be afraid to see somebody that's always supported the channel and always been really cool to me and has a great story? Why would I be mad to see him win? I just want to see the best man win, no matter who it is. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the reality, it, it's it's like it's like all of us being in an elevator and then someone farts and it stinks and everyone's like, God damn, what the fuck? Who, who, who ate Lunchables? Right? And then the person who farted tries to blame it on, oh, Ego, did you fart? Knowing I didn't fart. Knowing you, the one that farted. And the reason I use this funny analogy is because that's what they do. He's going to try to flip it on me and say, I'm afraid to see Charlo versus Jacobs. But in reality, he's afraid to see Charlo versus Triple G because the WBC says they're mandating that fight. They're WBA, WBC, they never said they're mandating Charlo versus Jacobs to fight next. You know what I'm saying? That's not the latest news clipping. There's no one that said the WBA didn't say, oh, Jacobs, if you don't get Canelo fight next, you got to fight Charlo. But they did say that to Triple G. The WBC said that. But he's going to try to flip it on me and make it like I don't want to see a good fight. It's easy. Y'all don't want to put that boy Triple G through the ringer. We know, we see it, and it's apparent. But we don't believe that shit you shoveling. Nobody. It's I'm telling you, fear makes people do crazy shit. You ever see somebody in a situation like, like I, I'm this is this is like a, a a bad well not a bad example it's because it's accurate but it's like. Some of them weak ass cops that be shooting 
like unarmed minorities and shit, it's because they're scary. A lot of those cops are scary. Like they haven't been in real life situations. They haven't been in fights all their life and shit like that. So when shit gets real and they got someone like kind of restrained, they see him reach oh, and then they shoot him because they're jittery and they're afraid and they have a weapon. So they just discharge the weapon. You get what I'm saying? Because they're afraid. That's what I'm saying. Fear makes people do crazy shit. Oh, he's moving. Bah! And you know what I mean? You end up shooting the person because you're scary. Because you're afraid. You ain't been through nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, let's say a drug dealer who's been through wars with rival gangs and rival drug lords and stuff. He's been in shootouts. He's been through drama and been through the, those types of situations. I'm not saying he's going to handle everything perfectly, but experience equates to calmness. The, the more experienced you are, typically, the, the better chance you have of being calm. Look at Floyd. Floyd has amateur experience, Olympic experience, all these pro fights. So even when he was hurt by Shane Mosley, he knew what to do because he had... <laughs> Shout out to Tony Webb. He made a move. He ain't made no move. I was looking right at you. That's what I'm saying. They get You scared of old man Quillis making a move? Like, you lying, bro. But that's what these fans do. Fear makes people... Fear is stronger than love. I always believe that. You know what I'm saying? The fear makes them do stuff like that. You bringing up Charlo versus Jacob, that's a good fight. But nobody's nobody's bringing that fight up. Nobody, like from a, and I'm saying nobody in terms of sanctioning bodies. WBA, that's who Charlo is the mandatory for Golovkin. The WBC, or excuse me, WBA Jacobs is the mandatory for Golovkin. The WBC, Charlo is the mandatory for Golovkin. The WBC just did an interview and said that if you don't fight Canelo, which we're urging you to just get over yourself with the money split, then you got to fight Charlo. Those are the rules. That's what's been lined up. So if that fight falls apart, the big business fight, then shout out to Passive Student. He said, Ego, your cop analogy is completely analogous to how casuals think. See, I'm glad you guys understand and relate to the... Um, the analogies but yeah it's like if you if you have never been through shit and then you some sit you if you're if you're like a, a five foot six cop and then this big burly six foot two 230 pound black dude you, you're trying to restrain him and then you think he's reaching for something you're gonna get scared and ooh, because you've never been through shit you know what i'm saying my brother is a cop, but see, the good thing with my brother is my brother, before becoming a cop, like when he was a kid, he used to get in fights and shit all the time, often. So he knows how to handle himself. He used to do some sh shit with boxing too. You know what I mean? Not on like a pro level or anything like that, but he used to train and, and things like that. So at the end of the day, he knows as a cop how to handle himself. That's why, you know what I mean? God forbid. He hasn't been in some of the same situations like the Oscar Grant situation, things like that, because he knows how to handle himself. But if you were a fucking dweeb that got picked on in high school and, and things like that and got beat up and bullied and then you get this power and this badge and this gun, you might not know how to act, especially if you feel threatened. Like, oh, this fucking 6'2 black guy. Hey. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to apprehend Wilder or some shit and arrest him and he's fucking huge. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to know how to. But that's what these casuals do. They create their own narratives. Nobody, Charlo versus Jacobs, it was fun when they had that little run-in. But nobody's mandating that fight. WBC is doing, they just dropped the interview yesterday on ESPN, said Triple G got to fight him. But you've seen that dude that I just burned in the hot seat. He bringing up another distraction. This is, my friends, the brand new Black Murderers row. This is what they don't want to tell you. This is the way they don't want you to know. And I dare anybody right now to step up and challenge what I'm saying. This is the brand new Black Murderers Row. Meaning, they'd rather see che Jacobs and Charlo fight two guys because a lot of these dudes have racist agendas and shit. Not everybody. Some people might just want to see that fight. But there's a lot of people who do. You know what I mean? Or they don't want to see Triple G lose to the black channel, the black fight, and all this shit like that. So you would rather see them fight each other and knock each other off than you would to see Triple G lose to one of them guys. You get what I'm saying? Because why would you, how would you justify that? How would you make it like Triple G versus Charlo 
is asinine and Charlo hasn't earned it, even though the WBC is telling you he's earned it, right? But you want to see Charlo versus Jacobs. Brain donor, you need a brain donor. I've already addressed that. Charlo just said you talk absolute shit. First of all, that's not what he said. Second of all, I've already addressed that in this stream. Just because you weren't here, that's your fault. I've already talked about that. Charlo thinks I'm someone else, and this has been an issue before. I have interviews with Charlo. So, yes, he did, you fucking liar. Bro, okay. Let's jump in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. Okay. Okay, Brian Donor, Brain Donor, or whatever the fuck your name is. I just addressed this earlier. So what do you say? What did I lie about? Go. You have one response. Tell me what I lied about. What did I lie about? You in the hot seat. These guys like to instigate like schoolgirls. What did I lie about? You got one response. You in the hot seat. Watch how easy this is. I'm gonna catch me a body. What did I lie about? Tell me what I lied about. A lie means I didn't tell the truth. So what didn't I tell the truth about? Now see how quiet he got. Take his lunch money, coming soon. What did I lie about? See how I have to keep asking? Brain donor. See, you looking for that brain donor, huh? You need somebody else's brain to help you answer this shit. 15 seconds. Please tell me what I lied about. Especially when there's this option called replay. Where they can go watch what I said. What did I lie about? They can watch what I said on this whole this whole live stream see how he just disappeared 12 seconds 9 seconds I'm like Ed 209 you have 10 seconds to comply 6 seconds come on brain donor what did I lie about uh, it's a simple question you, say, you said I lied you said it was going to be easy right 4 seconds he went AWOL with the quickness. Shooters, strap up. Two seconds. What did I lie about? One. Zero. Wrench Mafia. One of my shooters. Darren Heron. Get him out of here. His name is Brain Donor. Let him go find a brain elsewhere. You see how he just disappeared? They want to hate so bad. But... None of that shit works. Rich Mafia been clapping. He been catching him some bodies today. Someone said brain dead. Exactly. You see how? Oh, ha, ha. Charlo says you talk absolute bullshit. And I explain it. You liar. Ha, ha, ha. What I lie about? Get, get ghost. And he's going to come back under another profile. These young boys can't beat me. I don't. They want to say fuck shit damn like me. He want to cuss like me. But anyway, that's what that's what it is. It's the Black Murderers Row 2.0. Charlo hasn't done shit all to deserve Triple G, even though you had no problem with Vonis Matarosin not doing shit at middleweight, not being ranked at middleweight, not coming off of a win, not fighting in two years, not agreeing with his last promoter and having a new promoter and Don King going through a whole different like infrastructure. He gets the fight. And you had no problem with him getting knocked out for it. But you say Charlo's going to get slaughtered versus Triple G, yet you don't want to see it. Make that make sense. Peel Cosby says, my moderators block anyone that aren't Charlo fans. Bro, we have a good infrastructure here. Nobody believes you. If someone gets blocked, majority of the time we all see that body get caught right we all see what happened so unless you can you can prove it nobody cares what you're talking about it's not about blocking people who aren't charlo fans it's about blocking people who are saying stupid shit and who can't win in the hot seat end of so once again despite all the kicking and screaming the pressure is on the guy with the most belts as it usually is in each division but you notice when that person has fair skin that pressure they try to take some of the pressure off like 
what like Joshua, he got the most he had the most belts at heavyweight. People want to see him fight the other guy with one belt, Deontay Wilder, which is a dangerous out. There's pressure there. Keith Thurman, when he had two belts, there was pressure for him to fight Errol Spence and these other guys, other top guys. No different for Triple G. He don't get no special pass. He don't. Get, you got the most belts, you got the biggest bullseye. That's how it works in the sport of boxing. Floyd Mayweather, Pacquiao, these guys had names and belts and notoriety. You got the biggest bullseye. Most people called out Floyd Mayweather from Luis Colazzo to Robert Guerrero to Canelo to Devin Alexander. All these motherfuckers won the Floyd shot because he's the biggest star in boxing. Why do people in the UFC want to fight Conor McGregor? Because his star is burning the brightest. That's what happens. You're in the limelight and or you have the most belts. You got the most clout, whatever. People are gunning for you. Just like they do me. I don't see other small, small ass YouTube channels getting this type of hate. But guess what? I'm a top dog. Top dog. And I'm going to make you respect it. Top dog. So you see people coming with 18 different accounts and making diss videos and all types of bullshit. That's what happens when you're top dog. But see, this is me. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for whatever. I've earned my keep in this boxing game. Shout out to uh, Draderick Tatum, fight on Super Jack. These man fans always found a young bull for Floyd to fight. Canelo was one. Exactly. But they want Triple G to have a special pass, uh, you know what I mean, a special season pass to not fighting the great fights in his division. Don't work like that. You got the most belts. You're considered the best middleweight. They coming for you. That's what it is. Just like they coming for Joshua. See, and this is this is how you know that racism and race plays a part in boxing. Because when I'm saying this about Joshua, the only people that, like the only large group that I would say is, is offended by it or, or calling me names and stuff, are people from Joshua's country, for the most part. You know what I mean? P UK fans, because they it's like, oh, this is our country, man, and blah, blah, blah. We're not gonna take it. All this shit. But I don't have a bunch of, like, Americans and, and, and by and large, mad at me because I want to see Joshua Wilder. But I got Americans who are mad at me because I'm like, damn, Triple G versus Charlo is a good fight. I would, I would absolutely like to see that. You're like, oh, shut the fuck up. Why doesn't Charlo fight somebody first? Oh, you love the Charlo. All this bullshit. Because you want to protect that man. You, you don't want Triple G in there tough. You have no problem him fighting Willie Monroe with six knockouts. But when Charlo has... Somebody check how many knockouts Charlo got. How many knockouts Charlo got? Motherfucker said not enough. All right, he has 27 fights, 21 knockouts. So Willie Monroe got six knockouts when he fought Golovkin. You you were all about that fight. But when Charlo got 21 knockouts and it looks like he's getting better and he has almost an 80% knockout ratio, he needs to do so much more. He has to go through additional step. This is the same bullshit they always try to play. You know what I'm saying? Especially if the fighter don't look like Charlo. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's Charlo versus Jacobs, Jacobs is accomplished. Jacobs has a better middleweight resume because he fought Golovkin. He fought Peter Quillen. But you notice Charlo has an easy all access pass, a VIP pass to fight Daniel Jacobs anytime he wants. He could go straight to do not pass go fight Jacobs. Even though Jacobs has a better middleweight resume. He beat Seleski. In my opinion, he beat Triple G, but either way, he gave him a close fight, and he beat Peter Quillen, right? But you notice these same fans are saying that Charlo can go straight to Jacobs. He don't have to prove more. He don't have to have these in-between preliminary fights, nothing. You get a straight shot at Jacobs. Why is that? Why can he get a straight shot at Jacobs, but he can't get a straight shot at Triple G? He got to do more. He got to fight Jacobs. Charlo got to fight this person. Explain that. You know why. You know why. 
It's, it's that simple. You, okay, well, yeah, to fight Triple G, uh, he needs to fight Thanos first, show us what he can really do, then he, then maybe Triple G, Triple G's after money fights, he's old, no, you're making excuses, fuck that age, Floyd fought, listen, as long as you got guys like Floyd, you, you, you fresh out of excuses, because Floyd fought that motherfucker Canelo, he was like 37, 38, period. So if he could fight a 23-year-old, 13 years his junior, Canelo, who's big, strong, bigger than him, um, and and undefeated coming off a trout win, then Triple G could fight Charlo, his mandatory, in of. Oh, but Triple G, he's old, he deserves the money fight. Why? Why he deserved that? But when Floyd was in position, when Floyd was in power, y'all y'all called him a bitch and all these extra shit and a cherry picker for fighting money fights or pursuing the biggest events. You see how this shit works? I'm Ego Veli. Floyd Floyd at the tail end of his career after doing a lot more than Golovkin's done resume wise and for the sport wise in terms of big events and um, critical successes. He, he he tried to get the biggest events that he could get. You know what I mean? And some of them were really good fights. Like Madonna, uh, the Canelo was supposed to be a good fight, but he made him look like a schoolboy. But they called Floyd a cherry picker. Oh, Floyd waited. He waited till people looked worse and all this extra shit. But then Triple G, he gets ordered, or he's about on the verge of being ordered to fight Charlo. They say he's too old. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah, Jacob, just, see, that's what I'm saying. Th these dudes is fake. That's why they can't beat me. Because they're liars and fake. Jacob deserved a rematch at best. Never got it. Salito deserved a rematch versus uh, Vasil. Never got it. But Floyd has a tough fight for the first time in several years with Maidana. And he has to immediately fight him because people are saying it was a draw and Maidana got robbed. And then he dusts Maidana off even easier. Hurts him to the body. But Triple G don't ever have to fight Jacobs again. We see the games they trying to play. Shout out from the UK Ego. I love the work. Keep it real, bro. Hashtag Bomb Squad. See, the UK, they got fans, man. We working. We see the games we trying to play. We going to just keep exposing the bullshit. Now Triple G's in a, in a bad spot. I'm telling you why. Because... He's not in the A side versus Canelo. I don't think he's going to get 50-50. Why would Golden Boy budge? Like, some, listen, let, let's play the game right now. Name, as a, from a business perspective, tell me, since I don't know shit, and y'all know a lot about boxing, right? From a business perspective, why would Canelo's side or Golden Boy's side concide, concede to give Triple G more money. Just somebody please explain it. Because I don't get it for the life of me. So if there's something you can do to enlighten me. Explain what Triple G's side has done. That you think he, he deserves 50-50. Please explain that. Anybody. Somebody. Please help. Do it for the culture. Name what Triple G has done. That in the last couple of months or so, he deserves 50-50 when he just his team negotiated for 65-35. What has he done in between time, in the meantime, that you believe he's he's gonna get 50-50 from a business perspective? Not a oh, I thought Triple G won the first fight, or I like Triple G's haircut better. From a business perspective, what makes you think he deserves 50-50? Please, one of the you radical Triple G motherfuckers who always tell me I'm wrong, please enlighten us all, because I don't see it. And they get mad. Oh, you hate Triple G. Fuck all that. Explain. Explain what you're saying. Explain from a business perspective why De La Hoya would extend some new offer to Triple G and be like, yeah, we'll give you better compensation. Explain. 
That's all we're looking for. No, it ain't they're all blocked because they got 16 different accounts. Next next excuse. See how they have to keep making excuse? Because they know there's no answer for this. What has Triple G done where you believe he'll get 50-50? And that makes sense from a business perspective. Not what's fair, not what you want to happen. Explain it. Why, why is it so hard? Why, see, when I make a video about this, oh, you're so biased, you got biased ego, this sucks, you channel, oh, oh, Triple G, you hate him. Why is it all this? And then when I'm putting it on Johnny on the spot, it's, it's super quiet. It, somebody enlighten us all. What has Triple G done where you think he would get that? What, what does he bring to the table? What attribute in terms of being a critical success does he have that you feel he would be deserving of that? He didn't give Jacobs a rematch. Yeah, so that's not helping him get more money. See, this this is how you know. So when you see them videos that I put out and people say, oh, you you fucking suck. You're a Canelo dick sucker and all this stuff. This is, this is what we get. Nothing but crickets. He sells tickets to people using EBT cards. I'm done. Triple G did nothing to justify any renegotiation. See, but when I say it, I'm a villain. I hate Triple G and all this. Name what Triple... Listen, I've, I've opened the floor for the last like couple minutes and nobody is coming up. Nobody... All these radical Triple G fans that come to these other videos and disagree vehemently with what I'm saying, they're not here. They're not all of a sudden vocal anymore. I want to learn. I am... Listen, I bow down. I'm willing to learn. Right now, as of right now, I disagree that Triple G is going to get anything close to 50-50. Is it right? Is it fair? I'm not saying that. But I don't I don't see him getting it. So if you disagree, listen, all you viewers, if you disagree, listen, if you disagree with me, please tell me why. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. I need to know. Teach me. Teach me. Remember when Van Damme on Bloodsport... He was arguing with that um, the the Japanese dude. He was begging for him to teach him the the style of Japanese martial arts, and he was like, "And hey, teach me, teach me to honor you, Shidoshi. You are not Japanese." And the guy didn't want to teach him because he wasn't because Van Damme was white and wasn't Japanese. Hey, teach me, train me, teach me to honor you, Shidoshi. And the guy, you are not Japanese. You cannot earn katana sword by stealing. I wasn't going to steal it. Not if we make a deal. What kind of a deal? I'm asking you guys to teach me, train me, to honor you, Shidoshi. Train me. Please teach me. What has Triple G done? Nobody's willing to teach. We got a bunch of students, no teachers. Joey, I'm about to put you in the hot seat. First, you're talking about some girl in the UK giving you a head. Now you're trying to challenge the god, the young pharaoh. Joey, get in this hot seat. Okay, so, so, since you want to speak up, let's go. Hot seat. What has Canelo done to deserve 50% ego? He just got caught cheating. Answer my question, and I will answer your, your question. I promise you. If you get past my question... I will teach you and I will explain. So you teach me first, pause, and I will answer your question. I see I gotta force people to be in the hot seat because they want to ask these little sideline questions and, and challenge it that way, but then they don't want to step up and just say it. So I I'll just pick on people. I'll just pick people out the crowd. Sniper style. Joey Merlino, explain. Triple G has just come off a of victory. Who was his victory against? Vonis Matarosin? A guy who hadn't fought in two years? What does that mean? What does that do for his power? For his star power? You're a casual, bro. Man fan. Triple G just came off a of victory. Canelo has not fought since the Triple G fight. What does that have to do with it? What does that have to do with A-side? 
What does that have to do with it? So you think because Triple first of all, Canelo can't fight. So you you just sound moronic. He can't fight because he's suspended. So he can't really control that. He he had something in the system. He could have controlled that, but now he's suspended. So that's stupid. Canelo has taken a media hit because of cheating. What the fuck does any of this have to do with star power? Please explain. Answer my question. Instead of asking and putting all these sideline comments, what has Triple G done? The only thing you have said is because he just came off a win to Vonis Matarosin, a guy who wasn't in his division, wasn't ranked in his division, coming off a of L to Edison Lada and coming off a two-year layoff. So in your opinion, that's what garners him this uh, new lucrative deal in renegotiations by fighting a motherfucker who's not even in his division that people knew the outcome. That's 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 honestly what what you're gonna go with. That's that's your logic. Is that a strike one, y'all? If that's a strike one, say strike one. I'm gonna let the fans vote on your on your fate. If that's a strike one, and we can keep going, put strike one. If it's not, just say foul ball. <laughs> Okay, they gave you a strike one, it's looking like. Now, strike two. Let's go for strike two. What has Triple G done? I'm going to keep asking you the same shit. What is Triple G? That They don't buy that, what you just said, because he came off a win. Anybody can come off a win if you match them right. If they're already, like, see, and this is the thing. Triple G is a good fighter. So, I'm not just saying you beat him, you put him in with anyone. He's a good fighter. But if you match him with someone who's overmatched and don't really have anything in their favor... Then explain explain how that gets him a, a better deal because you knocked out a guy that you were supposed to knock out. Name three advantages Vonis Matarosin had. So y'all want some new questions? Name three advantages Vonis Matarosin had over Triple G. Three. Name three. It could be attributes, it could be resume wise. Three advantages he had over. Like he's superior in this department answer that question name three advantages triple G was not caught cheating doesn't answer my question strike two name three advantages Vonis Matarosin had it could be a physicality, some kind of physical advantage. It could be um, something spiritually or like resume wise. Name three advantages Vonis Mata wrote, since that's your talking point. Name three advantages he had. Hometown. Okay, that's one. And he's really from Armenia, I think. I don't I think he just trains in Southern California, but whatever. Hometown. What other advantages does he have? He had a great trainer. You bro, you're a casual. He had a great trainer, but that's the same trainer Ronda Rousey and the motherfucker was saying, Head moment! Head moment! Head. That's all he was saying. And she was dink, dink, bink, 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 bink. Like, I'm not saying he's not a good trainer, but that didn't show me nothing in no boxing. She was getting lit the fuck up by Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes, ha, 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 uh, bop, uh, head movement, head, head movement. Like, bro, strike three. Get this. Get this motherfucker out of here. Get him out of here. I'm talking about he had a great trainer. Golovkin got a good trainer. So you gonna say Abel Sanchez is a worse trainer? I said something over. Strike three, motherfucker. I said something over. You're telling me Edmund Edmund is a better boxing trainer than Abel Sanchez? Get him the fuck out of here. Get him out of here. Get Joey's ass up out of here. I'm gonna take this back to Blossom. Joey like, whoa, whoa. Get Joey out of here.
I'm done. I said name something that Von has had over Triple G. And I can't say that Edmund is a better boxing trainer. Abel Sanchez at least trained Terry Norris, Golovkin. He's training uh, Matt uh, Murat Gassiev. He trained Sullivan Brer. Get him the fuck out of here. Get this casual motherfucker out of my space. I said name three things that Vaughn has had over. He's going to talk about the trainer. Someone said Abel Sanchez is trash. No, he's a good trainer. But at the same time... So you, so if you're saying Abel Sanchez is trash and he's trained more more people, he trained a fighter to fight Mike Tyson. He trained Terry Norris. He trained Gassiev, who just looked good against Dortikos. He trains Golovkin, you know what I mean, who's undefeated. So well, how is Edmund over him? How is Edmund... That movement? How, what has he done over what Abel's done? These young boys can't beat me. I'm sick of this, man. Colby, you in the hot seat. Damn ego, it seems like you don't. I just gave his trainer credit. Your dumb ass talk about damn ego, it seems like you don't like Triple G. No, I don't like you. Now you in the hot seat. Colby Wise, why don't I like Triple G? What have I ever said because I, that I, don't, that I don't like Triple G? You in the hot seat now. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, y'all, all these slick comments and stuff, that's why you got the hot seat. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got? You talking about, oh, you don't like Triple G? This is the same bullshit they try to throw on you. When you speak in facts, they, oh, you don't like this. What have I ever said about Triple G? I only said from a, a factual standpoint what I feel about the Triple G situation. I don't have nothing against that, man. But what I'm saying, you guys aren't, aren't disputing. So, Kobe Wise, you in the hot seat. Yeah, you can put damn all you want. Kendrick Lamar albums, yep. You in the hot seat, bro. I'm not playing. You saying, damn, it seems you don't like Triple G. It don't have nothing to do with liking Triple G. I'm telling you how I feel about a situation, and you're not disproving it. So don't just try to throw, listen to yourself. I am listening to myself. Strike one, He. that's your response? Listen to yourself? Why does it seem like I don't like Triple G? What do you disagree with? Because you're not going to throw these these uh, slanderous remarks on me, but then also not be willing to dispute what I'm saying and, and show me the other side of what I'm saying, the real truth. Strike one. You got two more good, fresh... I asked a couple questions. Strike two, you're stalling. What have I said that shows that I hate Triple G or whatever you're talking about? Give us some examples. Use your responses wisely, please. The fans want to hear it. What do you disagree with? Kobe Wise, what do you disagree with? That makes me hate Triple G. You believe I hate Triple G because you clearly disagree with what something that I've said. So you tell me your truth. You tell me what it really is. Carleon wants to hear it. Triple G needs to fight his mandatory point blank. So Kobe Cheese, what do, what do you disagree with? What have I said that's um, inferior to your way of thinking? You tell me your truth. We got this hot seat going. Let's go. Let's get it. So it's a debate, bro. It's open. Now he's trying to cop a plea. See, you trying to turn state's evidence. I said it seems like you don't like him. Okay, I'm gonna give you one opportunity because that's really a strike three. Instead of stalling, I get what you said. Get it straight. Okay, we have it absolutely straight. We get what you said. You don't have to reiterate it no more additional ways. You said it seems like you don't like him. My question to you is tell me why it seems like that and tell me what you disagree with that I've said. Because if you're going to throw that on me and say I don't like the man for whatever reason, then that means you must think the opposite of what I think. Or you must disagree with one of the points that I've made. So without reiterating, without switching the subject and deflecting, tell me why it seems like I do not like Triple G 
and you tell me another perspective to to what I've said that you feel the opposite of. It's very simple. See, they want to revert to childish like insults or pointing the finger type shit. They want to just say it's easier for them to just uh, con con package it all in and consolidate it and just say you hate the man. But then when I'm asking why you're saying I'm hating the man, when I'm speaking from a factual standpoint and I'm not telling any lies, I'm saying stuff you can check on box rec. I'm saying stuff, some of it's opinion, but a lot of it is stuff we know. Vladis Matarosa was coming off of a loss. He's coming off a two year layoff. That, I didn't make those facts up. So you explain to me, we get what you're saying, but we wanna know why you're saying it. I like that, you guys like that? We get what you're saying. We we get it. We get what you're accusing me of, but we want to know why you're saying that. Exactly. Fernando says Vanas is a 154 pounder. So in me revealing that or stating that, that doesn't mean I hate Triple G because I'm stating something factually. Facts make people bitter, apparently. You know what I'm saying? It, I hate Triple G because I'm saying things that are factual. I'm talking about his opponent and talking about his opponent's pedigree or historical facts. So Colby, you gotta do something, baby. You already have three strikes, this is the bonus round. We get what you're saying, we wanna know why you're saying it. Why do, why do you, why is the first thing that comes to your mind, I hate Triple G? What have I said that hates him? You know what I'm saying? What have I said that you disagree with? Answer something and please, Kind of wrap this up. You see how Kobe just disappearing? Wrench Mafia clapping. Someone said fans will defend their point even if illogical. Well, then that's what we're going to expose. If you have a great point and you want to enlighten the crowd or you have a different perspective, great. But we got to hear what that is. Someone said Kobe vacated. Where is Kobe at, man? Ego, you the truth just like Spence. I appreciate it, but I'm just trying to see what happened with Kobe. I appreciate these comments, though. Damn, they said Kobe vacated his belt. They did Keith Thurman. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to... I like, what are those phones that were blowing up on the airplane? Kobe just got clapped. He, he didn't make the timer. What were those S7s, those Galaxy phones that kept blowing up in the airport? Or like, you know what I mean, exploding. And they banned them from, from travel. What were those phones? Did anybody know? Because I don't have an Android. I have an iPhone. Okay, the Note 7. So, if I work for the airlines or airline safety... TSA and I'm like hey we've had repeated instances where these note sevens reach a certain altitude and they're exploding and it's scaring passengers woo, woo, woo. so we've outlawed them and banned them from the flight would y'all be mad at me and say oh you hate Android <laughs> you know what I mean this is what the boxing fans do because I'm an airline specialist or TSA specialist and these Samsung phones are put together like shit and they're blowing up and I'm revealing that, then, oh, you fucking, you, you fucking Apple dick sucker. You sucking Steve Jobs dick. You fucking hate Android. This is the stupid games that they play. I hate Android and I'm stuck. I'm sucking Apple's dick. You know, oh, you suck that Apple dick, you bitch. Oh yeah, you love Apple dick. You want to airdrop some dick in your mouth. This is what they do. This is this is the bullshit they like airdrop dick in my mouth. Like what the fuck are y'all even talking about, bro? This is the type of bullshit they do. Oh yeah, you want to airdrop that dick. Oh, you got an iPad, huh? You got an iPad and an iPad mini. You're a bitch, right? Because I'm work with airline security and I'm telling you these Android motherfucking phones is blowing up that for people's safety <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm telling you that these pieces of shit phones keep exploding in the air and I'm the bad guy for it you know what I'm saying 
Oh, you, you're an Android hater. You don't like Android, do you? It don't have nothing to do with it. It has something to do with the safety of these motherfucking passengers. <laughs> you talk about how you hate Android. If the Apple phones was blowing the fuck up, then I would say the Apple phones is blowing up. But if the Apple phones ain't blowing up and they put together like some shit, then that's what I'm going to say. Because I'm Ego Valley. Mega Nuki, shut up. You worry, you worry about your channel. He said, don't go over to the dark side. I am the dark side. Can't be two good guys. I chose to be the bad guy. What you, what you talking about? Don't go to the dark side. This ain't no Star Wars movie. You talking about don't go. Solo ain't even doing good in the box office. You talking about don't go over to the dark side. Motherfucker, I am the dark side. But anyway, that's the equivalent analogy I can think of for y'all. I work with TSA, International Airport Security. These Android phones keep blowing up. I put out recalls and tell people, you can't fly with this. You can't have this until they figure it at the factory, until they figure it out. Then they, the, the fans come at me. Like, that, that's the dumb shit you get in boxing. Fan, oh, you, you hate Android products. You've always loved Apple products. You fucking hate Android. You hate the Galaxy. You hate the Note 7. It don't have nothing to do with hating Android. It has something to do with the safety of the airlines. Ego the Thanos of this YouTube shit. Don't get mad. I'm only being real. But this is what they do. I, so I say truthful things about Triple G's opposition, who he just fought, when he fought him, what his opponent went through, where his opponent's been. But I hate Triple G because I said that. You know what I mean? It, like I said, it's just like a, a factory recall. If they say, hey, kids are choking on this particular Teletubby toy and it has small pieces that are breaking off in the kid's mouth, kid. You know what I'm saying? Kids choking. Because I put out the recall. Nah, I'm the bad guy. So it has nothing to do with the toy breaking off in the little kid's mouth because it wasn't put together right. It has something to do with me for exposing it or highlighting it or bringing it up. So you're not mad at the manufacturer of the toy because the toy has components and parts that are falling off and the kids <laughs> they can't breathe and shit. You mad at the person who, who found out the problem and put the recall out. Crazy. Something special, man. <laughs> Herb, make it hot. <laughs> hey, yo, Dre, you got me feeling real bulletproof in this motherfucker. Because the windows and motherfucking beds are bulletproof, Nick. <laughs> Doc said he'll get hit, might get a fucking concussion, Nick. <laughs> Herb, my God. I smell pussy. Is that you? I'm going to let y'all fill in the blame. I smell pussy. Is that you, Blake? I smell pussy. Uh, Santa Cruz, Mares. That's a tough one. That's anyone's fight. Because the first fight was close. I like Abner Mares with Robert Garcia. I think that's a good pairing. Leo Santa Cruz throws a lot of punches. Maybe a slight edge to Leo Santa Cruz, but Adam Matas is, um, he's always in it. One thing that actually impressed me with Leo Santa Cruz, a fight I covered of his, was the Carl Frampton rematch. He showed he can box more and, and, and fight tall. So I would probably give him a slight edge because we know he can like throw a million punches, good body work. Um, but he also showed he can box and remain tall for, um, for a fight. He did that in the Frampton fight. I was there. And that's when Mikey got that that Dejan's Latitian in knockout. SMS promotions filed bankruptcy, so I don't think they really promote anymore. Um I wanna wish Lomachenko a speedy recovery. I'm in agreement, give Santa Cruz a slight edge. Yeah, I think, I mean, Abner got knocked out. I know it was years ago, but by Johnny Gonzalez. We never seen Leo Santa Cruz knocked out like that. So I think overall, Santa Cruz is probably a bit fresher, showed he could box. I, but I expect, it, I think it could be like the first fight, another really close fight that could be debatable and up to perspective. You heard? So that's my thoughts. 
what's the word on Wilder Joshua? About another week or two. We'll, we'll find out who Joshua's supposed to fight in September. I think it's a strong chance that it'll be Povetkin, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe they boxing's weird, so maybe they pull a rabbit out the hat and figured it out with Wilder. But the signs to me look like it's it's headed towards the Povetkin side. I agree with Alberto. He said the featherweights need to start unifying. Leo Santa Cruz Abnamadas when they fight Gary Russell Jr. They they gotta fight. Leo Santa Cruz lost that to Gary Russell as amateurs. He says he can beat him now. I would love to see that. Or if Abnamadas beats Leo Santa Cruz, fight Gary Russell. Carl Frampton, fight any of those guys. Pro preferably Gary Russell because you already fought Leo Santa Cruz. But if Abner Modest beats Leo Santa Cruz, then I would like Carl Frampton versus Abner just because it's a fresh match. Yeah, Oscar Valdez. See, but I think Oscar Valdez got to take it easy because he's been through a couple wars lately and he's coming off, he had a jaw surgery. So coming off of that, like broken jaw, I don't think he should just go into a unification straight up. He should probably get it a couple, one or two or something in. Gary Russell, Leo Santa Cruz is an awesome fight. Gary Russell, Jojo Diaz was a good fight. Um, Leo Santa Cruz is a bit taller than Gary Russell. That's a good fight. Andre Ward versus Bellew. I'm with it. Ward is always in shape. Bellew is a man's man. Make it happen. Easter, Mikey Garcia, who you got? Another good fight. I would give a, 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 a basic edge to Mikey Garcia. I think um, he places and picks his shots more. But the good the good thing about Easter is he's been wanting this. So maybe he, he found something that he could pick out or that he believes he could pick out versus Mikey Garcia. And I do think the way I've seen Easter fight, good or bad, I don't think he always fights tall, which I think he should work on. But I think it'll be a more competitive fight than the Broner fight because Broner's problem is Broner has power. He's very flashy, but he didn't throw enough punches. I was at the fight in New York, but Easter, that's never, whether you thought he got, because I know, see, when you talk to me about boxing, I'm not saying I'm like this, this God of boxing, but I try to give you my full and unadulterated insights. And you know what I mean? Some people, they focus so much on just the politics that it overshadows everything about the fighter like you bring up hey robert easter mikey oh robert's gonna get destroyed and he gets gift decisions you, i mean you could say like oh i thought he lost the shafikov fight thought he lost to javier fortuna okay but he's still a good fighter you know what i mean so you can't you can't just take people's worst moments and then make it like they're bums or you know what i'm saying and that's what people do i don't do all that i really look at the matchup and the thing with the matchup is Easter throws punches. He throws punches in bunches. Maybe even to a fault. Maybe at times he should fight um, more conservative and taller. But that could give uh, Mikey issue. But on the flip side, you got to worry about Mikey's power at 35 especially. And he's well-placed shots. Mikey has a one of my favorites with the one-two. With the one-two. His one-two is just, it looks very basic, but it's fundamental, it's technical, and he can get, he keeps getting it off, so obviously something with it, the timing or whatever he's doing, because he, Serge, Sergei Lipinitz has an amateur pedigree, he couldn't get away from that one-two, he just, Mikey kept following up with that right, bow, bow, like, you know what I'm saying, he kept getting it off, so it's a good fight. Heard Brooke, I think Heard's too big for Brooke. Because even if Brooke's doing good, and I, I, you know what, L listen, I'm going to say I'm gonna say this. To me, Kel Brooke is in the same position as Sergey Lipinitz. Yeah, they got a, a win or two in the win column since their back-to-back -back losses, but based on who they fought, I got to see more. Be <laughs> I got to see more because I'm not convinced that they're absolutely the same fighter because some of this game is about who you fought do you get what i'm saying like who you fought in between time kel brook just beat basically he beat rabchanka that doesn't show me nothing that don't mean you can get past jaime mungia's big ass or jared hurd's big ass because you beat rabchanka someone you sparred with so 
my question is, if you're in there with someone, if you're in there thick, a guy that won't go away, that's much bigger than you or taller and shit, like Jaime Munguia, Jared Hurd, and they're still around in the 10th, 11th, and they're still coming, and, and Brooks starting to get tired like he did in the Errol Spence fight, how are you going to deal with that? If your eyes start feeling that whatever, that tingle sensation, and you're in there with the guy who's much bigger, are you going to revert back to those flashbacks of the Triple G and Spence fights? So I got to see more. Same thing with Kovalev. After Ward dusting him off twice in a row, he, he has two wins, but you beat Igor Mikelkin and Vacheslav Shabransky, the guy that Sullivan Brera had stopped before you. So I got to see more. Elida Alvarez, that could show me more because Elida Alvarez has more momentum and he's a good fighter. He looks about Kovalev's size. So, um, Kelbrook and Kovalev, after their back-to-back -back losses, it's going to take the right opponent for me to see where they're really at. Like, if Kelbrook were to fight Hurd, that will show me something. Because Hurd can take a punch, and he's determined, he has the willpower. Hurd looks big. I, I've been next to dude. Actually, I was next to Kell Brook, too, at the Hurd fight. And Hurd's bigger. Trust me. Fury's back. Division now. Wilder beats them all, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Tyson Fury's comeback fight, even though I don't really know much about his opponent. Kovalev versus Elite Alvarez is an excellent fight. Good fight, yeah. I was good with the Marcus Brown fight, but that's a good replacement since Marcus Brown, his fight got canceled. I think he has personal issues. So, yeah, man, boxing's in a good spot. Man, listen, Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter, Kovalev versus Alita Alvarez. Who knows who Broner's going to fight when he comes back, right? What if, what if they had, like, Broner versus Amir Khan this year? Man, there's some good shit, man. There's some good fight. Leo Mades, Crawford Horn, Errol Spence hometown fight with Ocampo. We got some good shit. Hey, where the fuck is HBO, yo? Where's HBO been at in this process? This is this is insane cuz HBO was known known for boxing. In fact, it was HBO boxing, and then it was everybody else. HBO ain't... ain't. Hold on, I gotta take my allergy medicine. HBO ain't really been on the map like that. That's crazy. Well, HBO kind of messed it up for themselves, because they hated on Floyd, let him get away. And it's been a downhill spiral for them ever since. Their commentary got super biased. Commentary got super biased over the years. They started um, putting all their money into the Eastern European fighter and market. And guys like Chocotito. Chocotito got dusted off by Rungusai who's eating rats. That motherfucker saw a rung beside ate that rat meat. That motherfucker was eating rats. Fried rat. Hey, I ain't fighting no man to eat deep fried rats. You feel me? I'm from the Bay. <laughs> I ain't eating no motherfucker to fight rats because he clearly don't give a fuck. You, you, you see what I'm saying? The motherfucker eating squished rat deep fried with uh what's that shit called panko what's, what's them breadcrumbs called is that shit called panko motherfucker he put um yeah this shit motherfucker put Put the panko on the rat. I ain't eating no. How the fuck do you even get it? You go to Pet Smart and shit, and, and go get rat. Like, like yeah, this this one looking good. This motherfucker. Eek eek. <laughs> I ain't eating no fucking rat. I'm good fuck. I don't even like rats. 
Y'all be ratting on my Instagram. Fuck y'all. So, any... <laughs> someone say rats are us. That's what I'm saying. Ben looking ass. Master Splinter looking at Rat King looking at Rat Burger. Uh, rat Burger. I ain't eating no rat. And I ain't fighting no man that eats rats. Like, if you taking, like, creatine, BCAs or something, okay, the, the fight can happen. But you yeah, motherfucker eat rats, squished, flattened rat. Like, the rat looks so flat, so they, they had to, like, take all the guts and the intestines and shit and get, like, an ironing board, iron that rat out, and put it in that waffle griddle. You feel me? I ain't eating no rat. How do you just have a craving for rat? <laughs> Like, you know, like, for me, sometimes I, I, I start thinking, I'm like, man, I'm hungry. Man, sushi sound hella good. Pizza sound good. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, collard greens, like, that sounds good. You know what I mean? Like, even seafood, like, man, lobster, crab, king crab, like, that sound, sound good. But I ain't never just been at the crib, like, like, damn, I'm hungry. I need some fucking rat. Yeah. Dipping the rat in the Polynesian sauce. Like, I ain't eating. That don't even sound good to me. You know what I mean? I respect other people's culture, but me personally, rat don't sound good. Demolition man ass snacks. He said, do you see any cows? Uh, so I'm eating a rat burger. Uh, this is a rat burger. Stallone gonna keep eating it like he ain't bothered eating a fucking rat burger. Hey, I ain't eating a rat. But anyway, Chocotito got fucked up by Rat King. Rungusai wasn't fucking around with them body shots. Meat is meat, bruh. Whatever. I ain't eating no rat. You you eat all the rat you want. Boxing is meat. And then when you fail that, that Vada test... Cause that rat, he's like, what the fuck? I tested positive for rabies. What the fuck? Who gave me rabies? Is that fucking rat? You ate the rat. Now you failed a Vada test on top of that. And you got rabies, motherfucker. <laughs> like, so, like, what did I test positive for, Doc? Clembuterol, motherfucker, you got rabies. They, <laughs> you, you ain't gonna flip rabies. You can't make rabies sound like no good shit. You can They want to say shit fuck dead with me. They want to be just like me. They want to have rabies like me. Like, motherfucker, you just said rabies. Like, what are you talking about? Nobody want to have rabies like you. They want to have all the STDs like me. They want to have rabies like me. They want to test positive for rabies. Like, you can't make that shit sound cool. You got rabies, motherfucker. Who you think could beat Charlo at 160? I don't know. We got to see it. We, I mean, Charlo's only two fights deep. Uh, Jacobs is a good fight. Triple G's a good fight. Canelo could be a good fight. Billy Joe. But I got to see it. Demetrius, Andre. These are all good fights. That's why LSI. Let's see it. Mikey's still calling out Spence. Where, when did he call him out again? I don't know. Hey, I mean, he, he can call him out until his face turns blue, but... He's not, if you're going to fight at lightweight, then you're not ready to fight at welterweight. So, I mean, until he's cleared and the path is clear to fight at um, welterweight, then it don't matter. Me personally, I don't care about Mikey Garcia versus Spence like that. Mikey versus Loma is the fucking fight. If, if listen, in a perfect world, I'm going to play matchmaker. Hey, if, if, if y'all want me to play matchmaker on my, my goddamn channel, could I get a hell yeah and smash the like button? If, if y'all want me to play matchmaker right now, I'm going to do it on the channel. This easy work. Smash the like button. And could I get a hell yeah? I'll play matchmaker right now. I'll tell you the best scenario at lightweight. Listen, if I had things my way, ego matchmaker style, right? Robert Easter versus Mikey Garcia. Winner of that 
fight Lomachenko once it gets past his surgery. Let's say Lomachenko fights Ray Beltran. Beltran has a title. Lomachenko got a title for beating Lenadas. And then unify winner of Mikey Robert Easter and winner of Beltran Lomachenko. Boom. So possible combinations. Lomachenko versus Mikey. Ray Beltran versus Mikey. Robert Easter versus Loma. Loma versus um, Mikey. You know what I mean? Those are the different variations depending on outcomes. And it would be for all the marbles at lightweight. I like that. You know what I mean? And a lot of people would say Lomachenko will beat Ray Beltran, which we still have to see. But if he wins, then it'd be Loma versus Robert Easter or Mikey Garcia. Boom. That's matchmaking. That's my perfect world scenario. Ego promotions. That makes all the sense in the world. I like Regis program. I might try to go to the NO, you heard me? Hey, I might try to go to that Regis program fight in the 504. Shout out to the 504. You feel me? You heard me? Hey, Beatrice. Beatrice. Don't tangle and twist it. I might be out there, Wardy. I might be in that 504, Wardy. I want to see that. I heard Louisiana is a great place. I ain't never been. So that would be like mixing business with pleasure. Because I heard the food is great. I know the people are great. <clears throat> I ain't going to say it no more. I ain't going to say it, Wardy. Hey, Wardy, I might be out there for that Regis program. You heard me? I might go out there for that and be like, I'm out here. Boxing Ego, we out here. 504, we out here. You heard me? I might have to go to that, man. Hey, this ain't no Mardi Gras. Don't play with my fucking name. Don't tangle and twist it. Put some respect on my fucking name, you heard me? Hey, I might be out there. I might be out here, you heard me? Shout out to the South. I, w I like Regis' program. I like what he's doing. Your swag, if funny. Hey, water. I said them 504 boys, don't tangle and twist it. I'm from Eagle Street, Apple and Eagle Street, you heard me? This ain't Mardi Gras. <laughs> hey, I'm, I might be out there for that. It Regis Progray, he fighting somebody. I might have to support. Do the Birdman hand rub out there in, in, the, in the 504. 500 degrees, you heard me? Hey, Max, no gods. Hey, Max, no. <laughs> Hey, are you finished or you done? Quit playing. What happened to that boy? What happened to that boy? Tank versus Loma? Oh, I love it. I think it's a good fight. It's a better fight than some of y'all making it out to be. I'm telling, I try to tell y'all. Everybody I talked to said Tank got that real life explosive snappy power. He will hit you with that tank, that tank sauce. That duck sauce get dusted off. Hey, Tank. Tank got the power. Listen, Lomachenko, the the best thing that could have happened for Lomachenko potential upcoming foes was that Lenata's fight. Because you've seen Lomachenko more human. He got knocked down. Boom. When fighters see that, when they see them moments, they're like, okay, this motherfucker human. You heard me? You, you know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, that was a reality check for anybody. Even if anybody had fear of fighting Lomachenko, if they had fear, then that gave him confidence. I mean, it's just like when Kell Brook, a welterweight, gave Triple G some rounds. They're like, oh, welterweight's doing it? Then all of a sudden, you see Billy Joe Saunders. I got me pinned. I want a couple things me. He, he jumped bad after that because he's like, oh, fuck, my buddy Kell Brook, a welterweight? He was giving Golovkin some, yeah, 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 I got my blade out. But, you know what I'm saying? Look, I got the blade with the, look at the grip, with the little knuckle grip. This is just a box cutter, but I like this shit. Look. With the little knuckle grip. Buck 50 with it. Shout out to Milwaukee, see, shout out to Steven. They make great tools. 
all these Amazon Prime packages. I be swipe, 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 hey, 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 hey. hey. Yeah, man, Milwaukee came through with this. See, Steven know about these. Man. A buck fifty with my razor. Milwaukee does have good tools. Look, bow, bow, bow. We, we consolidate it. Oh, my gosh. Great tools. Hey, Milwaukee, sponsor the channel. Yeah. If y'all need a, a 90 degree angle, but it also goes to, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, a lot of great fights, man. I'm about to get out of here. I've been on here long enough. Shout out to my shooters. <laughs> Michael said that ox cutter. <laughs> yeah, that oxen. I know about this East Coast slang. Shout out to Hulk Bradley. He said, what's up with the chat? Joshua scared of Wilder, Lil G scared of his mandatories, and everybody scared of Errol Smith. How you gonna just sum up boxing? <laughs> you gonna just tell everybody who's scared of everybody. Loma would beat Tank with his torn labrum. See, I, this, this is the type of man fan shit I can't even respect. Like, even if you think Tank loses to Lomachenko, you're not even being realistic. Okay, tell, tell Lomachenko to fight him he just got out of surgery tell him to fight tank if that's what you really believe which nobody else believes because you're a man fan then tell him to take that as his first fight back or fight him with this torn shit you know what i'm saying you sound stupid like nobody would even want to see that because why would we want to see lomachenko with that much of a handicap but joe dumbass is the only one advocating for a guy to fight with an injury you're not a real boxing fan there's no way you could be a real boxing fan even if you like Lomachenko, say you love Lomachenko, why would you want to see him fight with that type of deficit, with that type of disadvantage or handicap? You know what I'm saying? Even as a joke, you just sound stupid. Yeah, Lomachenko, he could fight him even if his arm got cut off in the factory. Like, he just sounds stupid. Nobody believes that. And he had a war with, like, okay, you had a tough fight with the torn labrum, right? You had a tough fight with Linares, and it was still tough up until the stoppage. It was, it was very competitive. So now all of a sudden, Tank will get easily dismantled. But Linares didn't get easily dismantled. He got knocked down in that fight with the torn labrum. So again, no one believes you. Because if that was the case, then why didn't he look like he did with the injury versus Lenatis? He was in a tough fight. <laughs> the Black Channels. What it Boxing Me says, the Black Channels won't admit Lomachenko is a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blame everything on the Black Channels. McGregor fans are the worst. Uh, McGregor fans were pretty bad because they were like, it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't even taught, they didn't even know boxing. Like the ones I was seeing, they weren't even saying nothing. I'll be like, yeah, I think Floyd will probably stop Lomachenko in the seventh round. I really predicted that. I think I said the seventh or eighth round. And I'm like, what do you think? I don't know what you're thinking. Fuck the Mayweather. Like, you don't know shit because. That's not, I'm asking you to break down the fight. You talking about fuck the Mayweather's 49 and one and a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, you know I'm saying like, you, you're not on my level. I'm giving this intricate breakdown. Yeah, I think Floyd, he got a piston jab. He's been in it for 20 years. His lateral movement is gonna give the Southpaw problems. What do you think? Fuck the Mayweather. You don't know shit. If that's all you have to say about who's gonna win a fight is fuck the Mayweather's and he looks like Floyd Sr. or some bullshit. I'm Irish and we don't talk like that. Well, that's how Connor talks. So I don't know what you're talking about. He's Irish. So you're saying he's not Irish? Andrew Williams, come make me shut the fuck up. I'm in Cali right now. He says, shut the fuck up. Don't matter the skin color. What's inside the head counts. Okay. Make me shut up. I'll give you my itinerary. 
I'm probably going to be at the Aerosmith's fight. Probably going to be in Vegas. Right now I'm in Cali. You make me shut the fuck up. I'm on some show enough shit. Yeah. Dumbass. Talking about shut the fuck up. You said, it's what's inside your heart that really matters. Shut your dumb ass up. We run the game. <laughs> Ego love from Houston. Thank you. Shout out to the H-Town. H-Town always get down. Listen, I'm going to say it again. I said it in a video. Texas, I know you fuck with the channel heavy because I see y'all every time we do a roll call. If y'all are in the vicinity of Errol Spence's fight, check it out. You got to do it. It's a hometown fight. Tickets, because it's not like he's fighting Keith Thurman, so the tickets should be relatively affordable. I don't really know tickets prices because I don't really have to pay. And it's a state-of-the-art venue, so the tickets might be a little bit higher than 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 that. We fuck with you, Ego, for real. All about Errol Spence, baby. Let's get it. I mean, we got to celebrate the fighters that are doing it right. That's, that's the bottom line. Fighters that are, like, say when. Say when. I'll tell you the people I'm checking for right now. The people who I really enjoy watching. Say when. And I'm I'm going to run through my list of people... Like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna really say the people like the Danny Garcia. We already know about them, but some people that need more exposure that I'm really checking for. Say when. David Benavides, I like him. Combination punching, brains, has experience, spar with Triple G, and others. And I just like what he's doing. He's a young champion. Caleb Plant, that's my guy. Check him out. Slick fought Porky Medina. He barely could. Porky could barely land on him. A guy with more of a resume than Caleb. He's sweet in there. Sweet hands. Him. Devin Haney. They're saying he's new money. He gives him praise from Jesse Vargas. I got an interview. Jesse Vargas said, I spar with this kid. He don't fight like no 18-year-old, whatever age he is. And he's from the Bay. So that's a that's an extra plus for me to support somebody. You know what I mean? Um, so Devin Haney. Shakur Stevenson. Olympian. Represented us, the Americans, came up short a little bit from the gold medal, but still got a silver medal. I've heard a lot of great things from the people I interviewed. Joey Spencer. Joey Spencer's my guy. Spencer family is great. They're a class act. They can break down boxing. They know boxing, and they take this sport serious. Joey Spencer. Be on the lookout for him. Gervonta Tank Davis. Gervonta Tank Davis, you already know, two-time champion. Went through his uh, issue of um, weight losing this title on scale hopefully learn from that getting pulled away from being in the city being in be more you got to learn certain things but now he's he's with kevin cunningham and he looked great versus jesus cuellar um teofimo lopez i like what i'm seeing i see a bit of spark and showmanship how he did that that fucking for i don't even play fortnite you know what i mean but the fact that he did the the fortnite dance and shit like that got people buzzing he's willing to Expose Devin Haney and call out people. The showmanship shit. I love it. I love the attitude. Nao Anui. Beast. I think he's on his third weight class. He just knocked out Jaime. I mean, Jamie. I said Jaime. Jamie McDonald, who hadn't lost in 11 years, 10 years. He knocked him out with precision punches. He's a good body puncher. He has a very good jab. He was shorter. The shorter man in that McDonald fight. I really like Nao Anui. I told y'all motherfuckers years ago that Nao Anui would have destroyed Chocolatito. Y'all didn't believe me because of what HBO was shoveling at y'all. So that's another one. Um, Anui's a beast. You got Richardson Hitchens, Ryan Garcia. I definitely like, the Charles are, are veterans in the game, kind of. Well, not veterans, but they're getting up there to the OG status. But I really like the Charlos, what they're doing. They're not afraid to hold back, even though one of them said that I was talking shit about him. That's not the case. I ain't said nothing about him. Um, off the top of my head, those are the people that, that are coming to mind. Um, Anthony Yard, I'm checking for. Josh Kelly, I'm checking for. Daniel Dubois, Tony Yoka. He's a great dude out of Virgil Hunter's gym. I'm checking for these guys, man. Yeah, I like Josh Kelly a lot. People always ask me who I'm... Who I'm looking for and I'm always up for the new challenge and the people 
they have the potential to be nice. Um, light heavyweight. I like Vodstick. I like uh, Better Biev. I like, I already said, Anthony Yard. Those are the people that stand out. Cruiserweight, Deontay Wilder's brother. I'm, I'm anxious watching his journey. Marcellus Wilder. Um, who else is there? I feel like there's someone else at Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. I don't know. I, I feel like... Oh, Dimitri Bivol. He's looking like a monster. Stop that boy Sullivan Barrera. There's a lot of great fighters. I'm, I'm really just... Oh, Matt Murat Gassia. That's the person. I like what he did with, with Dortikos. He's... And he... he he looks older, not no offense, but he looks older than what he is. Like, he's super, he's super young. Like, I didn't think he, because he's like fully fucking bearded and shit. I thought he was older. That motherfucker's like 24 or some, whatever he is. Shout out to Amsterdam. I'm Ego Van Dam. How long you been doing the channel? See, some people be thinking I've been doing the channel longer. The, the day I opened my channel I had nothing to do with boxing. So you'll if you look at the when the channel was open, I wasn't even covering boxing. I was doing music videos and shit like that. So it had nothing to do with boxing content. So I've actually been covering boxing and like doing boxing related video. It kind of evolved into that. You know what I mean? Just being a lifelong fan of the sport. But yeah, when I opened my channel, if you go to the about me section on YouTube, it'll say when I opened my channel and established it. But for the first, I think, year or two, I don't even think I was even covering boxing. I didn't even start covering boxing or even putting out anything boxing-related until, like, uh, I think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez was the first fight that I talked about. Who, Daniel Dubois dropped AJ and Sparring? I heard that. Yeah, man, the, the the people... See, listen, if you start a YouTube channel, just know the hate's going to come. But you just have to be an alpha male. We alpha males over here. Over here. Alpha ego. Just know what you're doing and know if you're... Oh, I like Regis Prograde, too. He's the other person. 140. I like Jose Ramirez, too. Um, Gabriel Flores Jr., too. There's a lot of people, man. I'm just checking for all these cats. But anyway, if you start a channel, just just know that the hate's going to come. People, especially the bigger you get. Do you, I didn't even have nobody was even hating the videos when I first started. I barely even had hate. But, shit, the grind gets realer and people feel threatened. It is what it is. So, uh, you can't let that shit back you down. I know what I'm doing for boxing. And I'm confident in that. And I know that is that is pure. People are gonna f find all ways. Somebody said I was forty. I'm definitely not forty. Um, somebody said, you know, I mean, people they oh, you're buying subs. If buying subs pays for hotel rooms and allows you to travel and establishes relationships with fighters, bet some of the best fighters and trainers in the world, then fuck it. I guess you all should be buying subs. You know what I mean? If buying subs is See, this is the other thing with like buying subs and shit like that. That don't give you views. That don't give you interaction. So that's a waste of time. You're, AKA, you're not going to get any money. YouTube is not stupid. They know what people are gaming the system. They verified my account. We hit over 100K. YouTube is not stupid. They're not going to let you buy subs. And, well, I just grew. Let's say I just all of a sudden I got 100,000 subs in a day. They're going to be like, come on, that's not even realistic unless you had an extremely viral video. I put in the work, and y'all know that. They want to drink Coke. They, they want to drink soda like me, eat Taco Bell like me, and still be the champ. But these young boys can't beat me. We just working. I'm out. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to everybody for holding it down. Ego to push a T of this shit. Yuck. Drake got to respond, man. He brought up, he brought up your son. What's cracking with Charlo? What does that mean? Tommy Karate says Pusha T is broke. See, you're not, we, we're already from two different eras just based on that statement. Being broke and getting ate up in a, in a rap battle, what does being broke have to do with it? If the only thing you could talk about is money, then you got ate up. You know what I mean? You're talking about, oh, Pusha T is clutch. He's broke. That don't have nothing to do with 
the disrespect that he put in them bars. David Benavidez is fighting on the Mikey Garcia Robert Easter undercard, I believe. So he's going to do a title defense in um, L.A., which is a great area. Man, that card's going to be lit. I got to go to that. Robert Easter, Mikey Garcia, Staples Center with David Benavidez. Man, all my Mexican-American homies and fans is going to turn out because the Mexican fan base, some of the greatest fans in boxing. And when it comes to this L.A. shit, they be holding it down. So shout out to La Raza. Go out to that car because that car is going to be lit. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have them hot dogs out in front with all the fixings. Listen, if you are in L, if you eat hot dogs, because I know I know some people don't eat hot dogs, religious things and, and whatnot. But if you do eat hot dogs and you don't do yourself the favor of eating one of those L.A. hot dogs, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And there are these there's these little stands like, you know, what I mean, they're not even like as big as a taco truck. A lot of times there's just little carts and they have these hot dogs that are fucking slamming like you could get the grilled onions i don't know where the fuck they're getting these onions from i don't know if they're going like they got they're like the purest of onion they're like cartel onions the onions are so fucking good grilled um they put the pico de gallo on oh my gosh y'all gotta get them loaded hot dogs who's zach stoner i don't know who that is you're talking about rest in peace, but rest in peace. Modest versus Santa Cruz fight. I don't think I'm going to cover that. I think I'm going to try to go to the Crawford Horn one. Uh, tickets aren't out yet because the fight hasn't been officially announced. More so behind the scenes stuff looks like it's going to go down. <coughs> oh, yeah. See, EVE know what I'm talking about. She say, with the bacon wrapped around. I forgot to mention the bacon. Like I said, if, if that's against your religion or whatever, we support it. You know what I mean? It's Ramadan, too. But if you do eat bacon, you do eat hot dogs, you got to try one in L.A. Because they're real. California Love Part 2 without Gaz Dre. Um, I don't know Zach Stoner, Zach TV. I don't know who that is. But rest in peace to him. You guys keep saying. Sick. I live in L.A. That's a good card, man. David Benavides. I watched him live at the StubHub Center, and I was like front row, and he had a knockout. He had the he had the big like the big hat and shit. It was a nasty knockout. It was good shit. So he's a fun guy to watch. And now that was before he became a champion. He got a champion now. He's probably even more um, on his shit, more confident. Hey, look. Look at these LA hot dogs, man. Look at these hot dogs, man. And hey, they be hooking these hot dogs up, man. All right, I'm about to get out. I want to move to LA, but it here it costs a lot for type one diabetic in America. Yeah, that's the only thing about America is like it's it's much cheaper to eat unhealthy. You know what I mean? To eat like shit. I might go live later. We got to see what the views do like. Make sure to smash the like button. Let's get it. A lot of good stuff in the works for boxing. Smash the like button. We working people.